Hey guys, sharing files on the Raspberry Pi over the network is super easy and FTP is one of the oldest known ways to do this. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can download and upload files on the Raspberry Pi using two options, FTP and SFTP. But before we do anything, let's make sure that we have a way to access our Raspberry Pi's FTP server. One tool that I want to recommend here is to use the FileZilla client and you can easily find it with a Google search. Just make sure that you're navigating to the client, not the server. And once you're on the download page, you can either go with the installation option or if you don't like installing things, you can click on more download options and then grab the zip file under your OS that lets you run the application without installing. What's great is that you can use FileZilla on a Mac, Windows machine, or Linux. Once you have the zip file, just extract the contents and then step inside the FileZilla directory. After that, you can start the client by clicking FileZilla. And now we're ready to connect to our Raspberry Pi's FTP server with two different options. Let's first go over the fastest option, which uses SFTP. And by the way, this is my recommended way of doing this because it's more secure, faster, and easier to set up. The first step is to make sure that SSH is enabled on a Raspberry Pi. And if you haven't yet done this, you can simply open up the terminal and then run sudo raspy-config. Running this command lets you access your Pi's main configuration, which is super handy. And you're going to navigate to interface options and then hit the enter key. After that, go down to SSH and then hit enter again. You might notice that your Raspberry Pi might take a few seconds to process this, which is normal. But on the next screen, it'll prompt you whether you'd like to enable the SSH server. Select yes and then hit enter. Make sure that it confirms that it has been enabled right after that. And since we're done here, we'll exit this utility by going all the way down and then selecting finish. Let's jump back to the file Zilla client on our computer and we'll start filling out the connection details. You can either enter the host name or IP address of your Raspberry Pi. After that, just use your Pi user credentials for the username and password. These are the same ones that you'd use to log into your Raspberry Pi. But before you hit connect, don't forget to use port number 22. This is super important because SFTP uses the same port as an SSH connection. And if you try to connect, you might get a warning similar to this one. And you can just get past it by acknowledging it with OK. After that, you should see your Raspberry Pi's entire file system. And since we're using our Pi user, we should have read and write permissions to do just about anything. And if you wanted to transfer files between your computer and the Pi, you can easily just click and drag files and folders to start the transfers. And now we'll be going over option number two, using FTP without relying on SSH. First of all, it's a good idea to make sure that our Raspberry Pi has the latest package lists pulled down by running sudo apt update. After that, we'll tell it to upgrade all the installed packages with sudo apt full dash upgrade. And if this takes a few minutes, don't worry and just let it finish. Now we'll be using the following command to install a package called VSFTPD. This is short for very secure FTP daemon. Next, let's create a path that the FTP server is going to use on the SD card. The mkdir command with the dash p option is basically making sure that it takes care of creating nested folders for us. Since we know which folder we're sharing using FTP, we need to let our FTP server know about this. And to do this, you can run the same sudo nano command that I'm running to open the configuration. Let's use the search option using control W so we can hunt down a few options on this file. First, let's look for anonymous underscore enable and make sure this is set to no. This disables anonymous users from accessing our FTP server, which is highly recommended. After that, we'll search for local underscore enable and make sure this is set to yes. 
This is really nifty because it lets us use our local Pi user to log in. Now let's look for write underscore enable, which is pretty self-explanatory. Make sure this is set to yes, because otherwise you won't be able to add or make changes to files. Now we'll hunt down the local underscore you mask option. We'll uncomment it and then set it to 0, 22. This means that only you can write data, but other users only have read only access. We also need to look for ch root local user and set this to yes. This is mostly helpful if you want to be routed to the home directory after each login. And then finally, we just need to add two more options to the bottom of this file. So let's jump all the way down and first add user underscore sub underscore token. We'll set this equal to dollar sign user, which is referring to the Pi user or a specific one that you're using. The last option we'll add is local underscore root. And as you can see, we'll use the same path that we created a few moments ago using the mkdir command. This is us specifying that the Pi user only has access to these files when they're connected to the FTP server. And we're now done making changes to VS FTP D's configuration. And you can save changes by pressing Control X followed by Y and then hitting Enter. Since we just made a bunch of updates to the FTP server, let's run the following command. This is gonna restart the service and have it use our new settings. And we can test the FTP server by jumping back to the FileZilla client. Enter your Raspberry Pi's hostname, your Pi user credentials, and be sure to use port 21 to access FTP. Whereas in the previous example, we went with port 22, which uses SFTP. Click the quick connect button and then boom. You should see files that are located in your FTP folder. You can now start transferring files back and forth without any problems. Also notice that the root directory of the server is the FTP folder itself. That's because earlier we restricted the contents that can be shared. And I would highly recommend using this approach because FTP is less secure than SFTP. So unless you have no choice, it's best to always limit access if you can. Scratching your head about which approach to use? Well, at the end of the day, you'll have to ask yourself two questions. Do you want your data encrypted during file transfers? And do you want to get up and running without installing anything? If the answer is yes, I would suggest using SFTP. But otherwise, FTP will certainly get the job done and perhaps even faster because it doesn't need to worry about doing any kind of encrypting. Thanks for watching. And for more on the Raspberry Pi, please consider subscribing to this channel.